Do you know how infinite banking truly works? This is part one of a three-part series. My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. For the best infinite banking and financial advice, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when we post new videos. This video is dedicated to anyone who has ever asked us a question on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. We appreciate your viewership. And in today's video, we actually wanted to just talk about infinite banking and how it works. Mm -hmm. Because lately we have been getting so many detailed questions about policy mechanics that we want to make sure we refocus our viewers to make sure that you understand exactly what you're doing with the infinite banking concept mm -hmm. because if you're so focused on the dividends and the companies and their performance sometimes you forget actually what you're going to be doing with the cash value so we want to make sure that in every instance you understand how to maximize your cash flow mm -hmm. so whether or not you're doing infinite banking banker yourself or some form of whatever it's all the same thing when you use your whole life insurance policy to take care of your personal finances or expenses mm -hmm. so what we're going to show you today in this video is, first off, when we talk about replacing the banking function, what exactly do we mean? So we're going to do something a little different and actually share with you our screen so that you can see exactly what we mean as we illustrate it for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into today's topic, which is how does infinite banking work? Now, when we talk about infinite banking, it's all about replacing the banking functions in your life, or like Darius and I like to say, own your own lifestyle. And in order for you to replace the banking functions in your life, it's important that you understand how the bank works in the first place. Because if you're going to replace the banking functions in your life, you might want to know how you go about doing this and reevaluating what you use the bank for. So before we even talk about infinite banking, let's just first get a refresher and talk about what do we use the banks for. When we think about the flow of money as it relates to when we get paid, what exactly happens from the time we get paid to the time that we pay our bills? The natural flow of money traditionally is you get paid from your employer or your business pays you your salary. Step two, that salary is deposited into your bank account. Step three is from your bank account, what you should be doing is paying yourself first. If you've seen our videos, the three steps of becoming a good infinite banker is to pay yourself first. So we're already doing these things. Step four would be to then pay your bills. On the screen, you see that we have your mortgage, your credit cards, car notes, and student loans, but that also includes our utilities, our groceries, our entertainment expenses, whatever bills or expenses that we have. All of these expenses come out of our salary after we've paid ourselves first. And to reiterate what Darius was saying, so the traditional flow of money is we get paid from our employer or our business, and then that allows us to have the cash that we can then pay ourselves first, which means save money, and then pay our bills. Now I wanna hit home what we talked about before as far as what do we use the banks for. So if you see with the traditional flow of money, what we use the banks for is a storage facility to hold our money when we get paid. And we also use the banks to obtain third-party financing. Now let's take this a step further. When we talk about paying our bills, now that you understand the flow of money, a large portion of our bills are being paid to our mortgage, our car, student loans, and credit cards. And in this instance, these are all third-party financing institutions. And many of you are paying these four elements on a monthly basis. So what does that look like to you as far as how much money is leaving your household, meaning all of this money that you are paying your bills and paying to someone else? Now on this slide, you'll notice interest rates in the third party financing section. And these numbers we just got from the internet, we Googled these numbers for the average interest rates in each of these categories. Interest rates fluctuate constantly. So when we talk about these interest rates, don't hold us to these because as we said, they change a lot. If anything, we just wanna make sure that you understand the concept that you're paying interest on all of these things. As we dive deeper into looking at the cost of the average cost of a home, the average house is $279,500 and the average interest rate is 4.13%. That brings us to a monthly expense, a monthly mortgage of $1,355.41. 
this is the most important part of understanding the banking function because the bank gets an interest $961.95 of this mortgage. The only thing that goes to the principal is $393.46. So to the $279,500, $393.46 is applied to this principal. And this is going to take you 30 years to pay off this balance of $279,500. So what do you think about that? Your mortgage is $1,355, which is well within your price range. A lot of times when we buy a new home or, or we're looking into our mortgage ex expenses, we're just looking at that monthly payment. Can we afford the monthly payment? And a lot of times it's, it's yes, of course we can afford the monthly payment, but what we don't realize is the interest that we're giving to the bank on our mortgage. So how does that make you feel knowing that your interest is three times higher than the principal that is going towards your monthly payment? Next, let's take a look at the car note. The average cost of a car is $19,400. Of course, we're not going to get a brand new BMW, which we have illustrated here, but you get the picture. $19,400 and the average interest rate is 4.21%. That's a total of $359.12. Now, again, the same thing applies. The bank or the financer is going to be getting a percentage of interest on every single payment that we make towards this car note. It's not nearly as much as the home, but still the bank is earning interest on financing this purchase for us. The third item that we're going to talk about is credit cards. Credit cards are one of the most convenient tools that we have as it relates to financing our lifestyle. When we travel, we don't have to worry about using cash. When we go out for dinner, we can get points. And with that convenience comes costs. The average cost of a credit card is 19.24%, or the average interest rate is 19.24%. And the average credit card debt, according to Google, is $6,354. So at 19.24%, you can expect to be paying a monthly payment of $212.65. Now with that, the bank is gonna get half every single month of your payment in interest. Is just going towards the convenience fee of being able to have access to money immediately. Now, this is just one credit card. Multiply this by three or four if you have multiple credit cards. All have interest rates that aren't reducing the principal on the debt that you owe. If we're paying interest to the bank, and we see this is 19.24%, but in, in reality, half of it is going towards interest payments, how much do we want to finance someone else's bank? And that's what we're doing when we use third-party debt. This is money that's going away from us, never to be seen again. And lastly, we have student loans. The average student loan debt at the end of your undergraduate degree is $37,172 at an interest rate of 4.81%. Now, with an interest rate, with this amount and the interest, you can expect a monthly payment of $195.25. Now you notice that most of it is going towards interest payments. And we saw something similar to this with the mortgage. Because of the volume of interest over a long period of time, a lot of those fees are going towards interest. So here's a breakdown of the four items that we talked about, the house, the car, the credit card, and the student loan. That's a total monthly payment of $2,102.78. $1,254 is going towards interest. So that's a total monthly payment of $2,102.78. We notice here that most of it is going towards interest payments, which isn't at all affecting the principal payments. The only thing going towards principal in these examples is $848.77. And to the point that Darius is making, think about on a monthly basis, if you are paying over $2,000 a month just in third-party financing, 
This can be a significant amount of money that's being taken out of your monthly paycheck. And, and just take a moment and marinate on this information that we're sharing with you because this is the norm. As a society, we're used to going out and working and coming home and having to pay bills. But if you take a minute and look at the amount of money we're paying monthly for our expenses, it may open your eyes to realize how much money that you are spending, not only monthly, quarterly, but annually. Because the average American is paying more in interest than they can save themselves. The average American can afford an emergency more than $500 without having to go into debt or use a credit card to finance their emergencies. And that's because of the large amount of money that is leaving our household on a monthly basis because we're making principal and interest payments to someone else. And if you're paying about $1,200 in interest, this is a significant amount of money that you could be pocketing, but instead it's going to interest payments. Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. Are you okay with this? I just want to reiterate, you all are the one that are going out and working, making all the money to bring back to your family, but yet you have to give away, in this case, $2,102.78 every single month because, I'm using air quotes here, you're supposed to have a mortgage, you're supposed to have a car, and credit cards and student loans. How many of you are okay with this now that you see the numbers? When we're talking about your finances, it is super critical that you understand why you're financing things and you're not just going with the flow because our society says that you should have a house or you should have a car or you should have these nice things, but do you understand why you're financing things to begin with? Because if you're just going with the flow, you need to start taking the time now and do the math to realize how much money you're spending on a monthly basis to give someone else your money. You're you're literally just working, spending time away from your family in order to give someone else a bag of cash. And I don't know about you, but I'm not okay with that. I want to give as little money away as possible. And if I'm giving money away, I'm finding a way to get it back. But I would say as Americans, we're okay with paying all of these minimum payments that you see on our screen because we're taught that this is what you do when it comes to financing. But do you really realize how much money is bleeding out of the money you could be providing to your family? And some would argue that this is the cost of doing business or the cost of financing. But what if there was a different way that we could actually make these payments, but pay this money back to ourselves instead of giving it all back to the bank? Now this can be a little tricky subject and might sting a little bit for some of you watching this, but if we go into the meaning of ownership, the American dream is all about ownership, right? So a lot of our goals are all about owning property, owning cars. It's all about the white picket fence dream. But my question to you is, when we think about ownership and if we're making all of these principal and interest payments every single month, who is the true owner? I'm gonna let you think about that for a moment. Who is the true owner? I'm gonna give you a hint, it ain't you. Do you realize that you really don't own any of these things? Because if we talk about a house, for example, you essentially don't own the house until you get the deed. And sometimes the deed doesn't come in until 15 or 30 years whenever you finish paying your mortgage. So that entire time that you're making those principal and interest payments, the bank owns your home. And if you don't pay, guess who keeps the home? The bank does. You don't keep it because you don't own the house. Same thing with the car. You don't technically own your car until you've paid it off when you can get the title. And in some cases that can be between three and five years. Same thing with credit cards. With credit cards, there's no ownership in credit cards. You're just using someone else's money to finance your lifestyle. But if you don't pay back your credit cards, that's going to affect your credit score, which then affects your buying power and being able to get more credit so you can finance your lifestyle. And then lastly, with student loans, when we talk about ownership, who, who is being owned in this case is really you. The bank is owning you because you are shackled to pay those student loan payments every single year. And in some instances, if you don't pay those student loans back, then they pass to your beneficiaries. So I ask you this question again, who is the true owner? Is it them or is it you? 
And this is exactly why Darius and I say own your own lifestyle or someone else will. Because I hope the message that should be coming through in this presentation is that the banks are providing a service to you, which is allowing you to use their money. However, that service, what we don't realize is eroding our wealth on an annual basis because that's money that we are giving away to someone else as opposed to keeping it for ourselves. And the reason why this continues to happen on an annual basis is because it is ingrained within our culture that we should own homes, we should own cars, we should have a sense of ownership. But the fact of the matter is we really don't own any of these things until we pay it off. And until we pay it off, we have given the bank sometimes two times and three times the, the worth of the item that we're financing just to be able to call it ownership. So it's decision time. Now that we've shared this information with you as far as the banks and how the banks function, you can't unlearn this information. So what are you gonna do about it? And we hope that this video has motivated you enough to make the decision to make a change. So in this instance, all we're going to do is reevaluate the flow of money. Let's look at from the time we get paid to the time we pay our third party financing. What element of this process can we control when it comes to the banking functions, we can't change the storage facility. We still need to utilize the banks in order to park our paychecks, but we can change how we finance our lifestyle. And in this instance, the element that we are gonna control is our savings, how we are paying ourselves. Because right now the average rate for savings account is about 0.09%. And all we're going to do is move our savings account from a traditional bank and we're going to put it inside a whole life insurance policy. And the reason why we do this is because we just want to leverage that savings account so it can make more money for us. We want to work smarter, not harder. So we're going to move the savings account over to a whole life insurance policy so our money can make money for us while we sleep. And in the next video, we are going to break down the benefits of using a whole life insurance policy and what the new flow of money looks like now that you've transitioned your savings account over to a whole life insurance policy. And we are going to leverage our savings account to take over the debt or to take over the monthly expenses that we are incurring and paying everyone else. All right, so we hope that that information provided value to you because again, in order to understand infinite banking, you have to understand how the banks work mm -hmm. because you need to replace the banking functions in your life so that you can keep more of your money on an annual basis. So that's why with today, we just wanted to talk about the banking functions in your life to make sure that you understand exactly how you are going to replace the bank and become your own bank or your own source of financing. And if you want to join a community of like-minded high achievers, we have a Patreon community where we talk about exactly how you put these ideas into practice in your own life. So check out our Patreon page so you can understand how to navigate the sometimes tricky space. And go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know how this video provided value to you to make sure that you understand how the infinite banking concept works. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, share this video with family and friends, and subscribe. And remember to own your own lifestyle. Or the banks will.